Let's see. So we Let's check YouTube. Yep, the connection is good. And we are live on YouTube. And so thanks everyone uh, for uh, bearing with me this uh, moment. It is a it is a pleasure and uh, also an honor to have as my guest John Mark Dugan. Uh, he has a very interesting uh, story, uh, although I do not want to spend too much time on that because he has he has videos already published uh, by other people because his YouTube channel has been erased. Uh, and uh, but just to say that he is a former police officer, sheriff def deputy uh, from Palm Springs, yeah. if I am not wrong. Uh, Palm Beach. Palm Beach. Palm Beach. Palm Beach uh, County. Sorry. Palm Beach County, okay. and uh, he he had some some problems with the law, and uh, and and you might even before you jump into any conclusions, those were actually uh, he was trying to make it right by uh, um, whistle blowing uh, corruption cases in the police force. Am I correct? That's correct. Yeah, and uh, and so he found his uh, safe haven. In Russia, uh, and, uh, and uh, now my question to you, John. My first question is: Why Russia? Why not any other part of the world? Well, I had been to Russia before. I was actually dating somebody uh, at that point in time, a uh, Russian girl, and I had been here like four times already. And I knew I really liked it here. Um, and I also knew that uh, this was a place that the U.S. government couldn't apprehend me. Uh, what, what like made you so sure? Uh, I mean, wasn't like, couldn't be a doubt in your mind that, uh, maybe a, a kind of a secret exchange would be made. And I mean, is it really, were you really solid sure that the U S government in any way could uh, like ask for your extradition or something like this? Well, they, they have asked, they have asked okay. several times. Um, but the leader here is a very honorable guy. Mm -hmm. President Putin, mm -hmm. very honorable guy. He doesn't engage in that kind of business. Um, if the Russian government gives you their word on something, they're going to keep their word. And uh, when they give you political asylum, I mean, you know, look, they could have exchanged uh, Julian Assange if they wanted to. And uh, and he even he even like he doesn't really say nice things about Russia. No, because, that's true. Because well, he's a bore, and unfortunately, if you're a boring person, you're not going to like this place. But um, he doesn't say anything. Uh, he doesn't say a lot positive about Russia, and yet he is still living here, a free man, a free life. So, yeah. And uh, why? What? What do you mean when you say that? Uh, this kind of people, you wouldn't like Russia if you were, you say, what was the word you, you, you used? A bore. A bore. What, what is that? Forgive my ignorance. Somebody, somebody boring. Somebody ah, who, somebody you know, boring. Yes. Yeah. If, if you're a boring person, um, you're not going to like this place. If you like doing stuff, there's a million and one things to do in Russia. Uh, I could I could pick any day of the week, any time, and I could find something to do. Any day of the week, you can go to the theater. You can go uh, um, watch the ballet. You can go to some festival somewhere. There's a, so much stuff. Uh, they have some of the best nightlife I've ever seen of any city anywhere. I've been to New York. I've been to Chicago. I've been to places in California. There is nothing close. To the Moscow nightlife, so you know if if you like an interesting life, this is certainly the place. Okay, and apart from that, uh, was it easy to find, for example, a, a means of sustenance, for example, a job. Uh, how did that work? Ooh, man, that was tough, dude. It was tough for my first year and a half, two years. It was difficult. Um, of course, I could have taught English. 
there's a big demand for English teachers here, but I'm just not the English teaching type. Um, but if you are the English teaching type, you know, you can make 70, even a hundred dollars an hour here Ooh. teaching English. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it, it's good. So, you know, people will pay big money for uh, an English teacher. Mm -hmm. And, uh, when did you start to get, uh, uh, uh involved in the in the politics in the way that you did like you you went to the front lines you made a documentary which we uh, which i wanted to talk about also shortly uh when yeah. did you decide to do or decide to do this this kind of work uh what connections did you have or did it come easy how how did it all go well um you know there's a geopolitical group that i'm a member of and i've spoken on several different topics here Uh, for instance, I spoke on the stupidity of the sanctions before the sanctions ever uh, were put in place when, when they were just threats. I told how the sanctions were going to absolutely crush the economies of the West. I was 100% right. Um, and when uh, after the special military operation began and Russia went into Ukraine, uh, just a few days later, I had the opportunity to go. And so I was like, yeah, I am more than ready to go. Give me a flak jacket, give me a helmet, I'm there. Yeah, and you you I I must say that everyone should watch that uh, documentary. Of course, things in the news, the sound bites and all this all go so fast, no one remembers Mariupol anymore. And especially now that it's being rebuilt, it's not interesting for the western media <laughs> to report on it anymore. Yeah. It's true. It's true. Mariupol has, uh, I mean, it's it, it's got a lot of work to do, believe me, but it is getting beautiful. They're, they have done so much, mm -hmm. and the new sections of Mariupol are absolutely gorgeous. Um, and just the speed of which they are re rebuilding roads, rebuilding apartments, building new apartments and hospitals and schools is... Uh, really, it's a model mm -hmm. for many, many communities. And the way they've accomplished this is they use existing blueprints from existing companies that have already done this in Russia. And they say, you know what? You've already worked out all the problems. You've already built this community in, say, St. Petersburg. Build it in Mariupol. And they've been doing it. And because of this... Um, Because of this, it's just, I mean, so quick. I think they've already got up like 60 hospitals in the Donbass. Yeah. 60. Yeah, I've, I've, uh, I've talked to some people uh, before uh, from uh, that are living in Russia. You, you are the second American, uh, former American citizen, if I may say so, uh, that I talked to. Who is the first? Uh, uh, Russell Bentley. Uh, I I had I had Russell Bentley from Texas. You you I'm sure you've. I know Russell Bentley. Yes. Yes, uh, he's he's been uh, uh, he's been my guest for for two times now, and but the the second time we spoke I spoke to him, um, his opinions were uh, rather harsh uh, towards the management of the war, and uh, I don't know if you are aware of this. Uh, Uh, of people that are thinking because he's not the first one that I speak to that thinks this they the, their own stance is like they are very pro russia uh, they are very pro mr vladimir putin but they have a very strong critique uh, of the way the war is being conducted uh, yeah. and some of these figures are very important one of them was arrested recently do you have any what is have you do you have any thoughts on this how How do you see this? Are these people right? Are this utter bullshit? What, what is what is this? Well, I, I don't want to call out your former guest. However, um, you have certain people in the Donbass, certain Americans, I, I will say, and they have lived there. They've been reporting on the conflict. They think that they're owed something. 
They come to Moscow with their hands out, thinking that they're going to get a fat paycheck for doing the reporting. This is not how it works. I've made no money doing any reporting in the Donbass. And they then you get these people, they get disgruntled because, you know, they think that they're owed something. And they're not. Mm -hmm. but they think they do. And so they get disgruntled. They badmouth you. They badmouth um, uh, the government, this same individual that we are speaking about now. Mm -hmm. He has badmouthed me when I refused to give him money. He has badmouthed Mike when he refused to give him money, Mike Jones. Um, and I don't, I don't like bringing this up, but since you're asking about it, I'm going to say that um, there's – they have an axe to grind. Let's just put it that way because they're not getting what they want. They're, they're not getting what they think that they are due. Mm -hmm. So just keep that in mind Okay. Um, when, you, when you listen to some of these people speaking. Mm -hmm. uh, well, one of them uh, was uh, Russell Bentley. I spoke a couple of times. The other one was a guy – I think he doesn't live in Russia. Well, he goes on v very anonymously, uh, and uh, but I saw an interview with him on, in a in TNT uh, radio with uh, Ossi Kosak, and his name was uh, he goes by Rolo Slavsky, the name, and he's very uh, I must say is he is very all gloom and doom about the the future, the intern future of uh, of uh, Russia, and then well, he yeah, go go ahead. Hey, look, if, if she's not here, I don't know if he's here or not. Um, but <sighs> you're not going to get 100% of everything that you're trying to achieve in war. Um, you are going to have casualties. You're going to have destruction. Uh, this is just the fact of war. Uh, the fact that Russia has been doing so much to actually minimize casualties – I mean, if this was America that went in, yeah, America probably would have finished by now, but they would have killed everybody in the Donbass indiscriminately. Mm -hmm. um, and really, the only ones that have been getting killed in this war are the ones that the Ukrainian militaries have been not letting evacuate and have been holding hostage. So, you know, look – you're not always going to have a huge pile of roses. There's always going to be some dog poo in that pile. Unfortunately, that's just reality. Mm -hmm. For example, one of the arguments I don't, I don't, I just, I thought I asked you this because I'm genuinely curious. I don't want to make any point at all. Just putting, this, go ahead. Uh, just me. putting this forward. And because one of the points, for example, that that uh, Russell made was he he is he made this question: Why didn't the Russians have destroyed all of the Dnieper bridges by now? That would uh, because that would have put enormous pressure on the logistics of the Ukrainian army, and it would help uh, the 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 campaign going much uh, smoothly, supposedly. And and, and the answer is. They need to be able to get across those rivers when they have the opportunity. Okay. okay. I mean, because how are you going to get tanks across if you destroy the bridges? Mm -hmm. It's a two-way street, literally. <laughs> okay. Okay. But then, but then the uh, wouldn't the Ukrainians, if they were like being pushed through the Dnieper, destroy themselves to make better defense on the other side? Like, for example, uh, uh, Russia did in, in the south when they when they retreated uh, to the to the to the south margin of the river. Well, it depends. It depends. It's, um, uh, you know, strategically, both both people want to uh, uh, both people want those bridges. Both both sides want those bridges. You need you need them. Otherwise, how do you get across? Okay, okay, so. okay. Uh, how do you? How would you? Uh, I know this is this is because I've 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 talked to uh, several people and I try to uh, 
I know, I mean, it's it's impossible. I know being in Portugal, finding out the hundred percent of the things that are going on in the in this conflict. But I try to mm -hmm. put together most uh, uh, the the bigger amount of pieces that I can. Let's put it this way. Okay. In, my, in in this in my bad English, but now changing a little bit the subject again to uh, Russia life. Uh, okay. There is a, a there is often appointed in the West. Uh, and it's like it's uh, the journalists uh, on mainstream TV. They speak it like it's a given thing, uh, for sure. Like uh, that Russia is a dictatorship. That if you speak wrongly against the government, you get arrested immediately. And uh, how would you compare the freedom of speech in Russia versus the USA that you know well and you've served the law there? Um, so saying that Russia is a dictatorship and you're going to be arrested. If you say something they don't like is BS. I know this because recently I've said a few things against a certain individual here by the name of John McIntyre, um, who's being helped by a Russian politician. And I escorted him for being a piece of crap. And, um, you know, it didn't make it didn't make Russian media look good. I received no knocks on my doors. I didn't receive any calls from anybody telling me to stop. Nothing. Okay. It's just, it is what it is. It is. And um, I, I put videos about him on my V contact page. Guess what? They're still there. They're still there. If I would have made the same video against uh, something that was um, um, against American interests, uh they would have been deleted by youtube yes like so, like they have the, the like yeah you have that proof <laughs> like mean. my entire channel yeah yeah so um you know so i don't uh i i don't see uh there any validity to their point that there's more censorship in russia there's absolutely not there's less mm-hmm mm-hmm Uh, I've uh, actually asked this uh, when last time I spoke to Mike uh, that uh, if uh, he, ha he had exchanged any of his liberty for the new things he loved about this society, and he said none, none whatsoever. Yeah, and uh, I, I, I think so too. But I'm, I'm far away. That's why I have to keep asking to different people the, the, the same, uh, the same question. Um, How how are you feeling? What is your perception on the impact of the sanctions? You you spoke just previously bef uh, that they would hurt the West, and we feel it here. I feel it. I mean, I live on a paycheck uh, from mm -hmm. my job, uh, but uh, do they have any impact at all in Russia? What's the well? What what do you make of it now after one and something year, five hundred days of? Plus of For sanctions. everyday normal life, there is no impact. Um, what has been impacted are the cost of Western goods. So if Western goods get import, imported, they are expensive, but that's only because of their own inflation. Mm -hmm. You got to remember, R Russia got kicked off the Swiss system. Yep. That isolated Russia from a lot of this inflation. Mm-hmm. So when you see these inflation statistics in Russia, um, it's because of the cost of any goods that came from the West. It's not – look, the food and the gas here has not really changed at all. Mm -hmm. In fact, I think I'm paying less now for fuel mm -hmm. than I was before the start of the special military operation. Mm -hmm. um, I'm paying – let's see. I've actually made a couple of posts on this. I pay four times less – for a a big mac meal than they do in america four times less a big mac which is which goes by other name now <laughs> no nah, maybe i don't know i i don't know it's been a long time but no no i um, mean in russia it goes by other name in russia i'm sorry i'm not saying big mac uh, i meant uh, a burger king whopper meal ah okay burger king whopper yeah yeah okay 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 um i I think the prices in uh, in the Russian version of McDonald's haven't changed either. So, um, 
and the food's better here. It just it just is because they don't allow all the crap in the food that they are allowed to put in the West. They don't allow fillers. They don't allow the GMOs. When you get a beef patty from like McDonald's or Burger King, it's a real 100% beef patty. Uh, whereas in America, I think they use like wood pulp. Yeah, to fill out the... Yeah, yeah. yeah because it's, it's, yeah. Ve it's vegetable fibers. They can treat it and make it digestible. Or at least, yeah, yeah, it's it's okay. insane. Yeah, they they don't allow that here. Yeah, I feel it. so, and so the quality of the food's better, and the prices have not really changed. I mean, the price of milk is identical as it was two or three years ago. Mm -hmm. um, bacon, produce, and the produce here is gorgeous, um, very high quality. Um. So generally, but, but what, uh, I'll tell you what has risen. <laughs> You're going to laugh at this. And call me a cynical man or call me a conspiracy theorist, but I am almost under the impression that these sanctions were put in place by China Joe Biden as a way to help China. And the reason I say this is because, well, when the Western car manufacturers pulled out of uh, Russia, did they think that the Russian people are just going to say, well, we can't buy any more cars. We're just going to walk to Granny's house. No. So where are they getting their cars from? Yeah. The Chinese car market has grown by a factor of four in Russia yeah, of course. since the start of the military operation. Mm -hmm. And because of that, supply and demand – um, the prices of Chinese cars has gone up significantly, um, probably 20 or 30%. Mm -hmm. China is opening, opening a ton of factories here in Russia now because all the Western car mar markets have pulled out. And the quality of these Chinese cars will astound you. I mean, for instance, uh, Hongzi, Mm -hmm. If you ever look at that car, it looks like a Rolls Royce inside and out. The build quality is incredible. Mm -hmm. And um, it's only going to get better because there's demand for these cars that is missing from like the Cadillacs that they don't have here anymore or the mm -hmm. BMW. Yeah. Uh, which you can actually still get, but it's kind of gray market. Okay. Uh, Mercedes, same thing, gray market. Um, but it's it's just not convenient. So, yeah. So so America has screwed mm -hmm. all these companies in the West, and they've pushed all this business in China. Mm -hmm. But uh, how is it that? Because I mean, sometimes I cannot believe that the leaders in in the West, uh, namely in the White in the United States couldn't have predicted such so actually your theory might make some sense because it's it would be I think they did predict it I absolutely think they predicted it okay. look Joe Biden is bought and paid for he's bought and paid for by the oligarchs and politicians in Ukraine and he's bought and paid for by the oligarchs and politicians in China mm -hmm. so of course he's going to do stuff that benefits both of them I know that uh, uh, you are uh, you made a documentary, and I only saw this after after being uh, after having uh, uh, Masha Leilanova uh, as a translator for Isabella Lieberman on on one of the one of the shows, and then only only after I saw the the interview that you you've done with her and uh, the documentary that you've done with her going with her to the donbass because yeah. and i was i was surprised because she was actually an anti russian government activist yes she was in fact uh, the photo in which she got arrested she's wearing ukrainian colors yeah, uh, yeah i that really and but she did change uh, i i think that the interview is very well done i will i will leave um because it has been reposted this interview uh, and I will I, I will leave a link to it uh, afterwards in the in the description. Yeah, it's a good it's a good interview, and it's a it's an interview 
which I think it's so important because um, it shows what happens when you stop reading the Western propaganda and you go to see for yourself. And that's exactly what she did. Yes. Because she, she, her head was filled with all this Western propaganda. And, um, well, uh, she speaks very good English. It's easy for her to catch this. <laughs> yes. Yeah, she speaks great English. Yeah. She speaks impeccable Russian. And her translating skills, there's no better translator in Russia that I've ever met. Not even Putin's translators mm -hmm. can translate as good as she can. Yeah, she is, yeah, she is really good. I've, I had the opportunity to, to watch that uh, live. And uh, speaking of which, uh, speaking of language, how did you fare uh, in your first times in Russia and even now? With the with the being an American, and I believe oh. you speak you, you only speak English. I don't know if you speak other languages. I can't speak Russian even now. <laughs> I can I can say a couple of things. I can read a menu, and and decipher what most of the stuff is, but I can't hold a conversation. I'm I understand like I catch certain words when people are talking to me, and uh, because. The people are very educated here, mm -hmm. and you normally don't find somebody who speaks one language. You normally find somebody that speaks two, three, four languages. Even Masha, she speaks three. She speaks fluently uh, English and German as well as Russian. So, you know, this is this is uh, Russia for you, and. A lot of a lot of the people here. The reason I don't speak great Russian is because all my Russian friends they want to practice their English. Okay. And um, um, and Westerners are treated very good here. Don't believe anything that they tell you. We are treated outstanding here. If you go into a restaurant, well, let me give you a little story. My ex girlfriend used Please. to call for restaurant reservations. And they would be booked. And I would call in English for restaurant reservations, and all of a sudden a table would appear. <laughs> Talk about positive discrimination. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, you they really they really do everything to make foreigners happy here. Uh, so, was it was it difficult to uh, to travel uh, the trip to Russia? Uh, well, no, because you've been you went there before the you went there before the sanctions, right? So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah but yeah. even now, it's not difficult. Mm -hmm. uh, because I, I've no, uh, for example, I've checked all the flights directly from the EU, and uh, no, no, there no. are none. You can't find any anymore. Go to Turkey, and then get a flight from Turkey. Yeah, like book a direct flight to Turkey, yeah, and then from Turkey book a direct flight to from Moscow. Uh, uh, from to Moscow, yeah. you'll get away with like six, seven hundred bucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. so. I, I actually, but every time I speak to someone here of do, uh, about doing that, uh, maybe I I go there and see by myself. And uh, sure, people, uh, and, but, sure. I'll take you around. And, and people, but people immediately, I get this reaction, this very, very negative, and uh, I don't want to. I mean, I know that people that talk to me are worried about me, and I don't want to offend them in any way. But uh, they, know, they, they, they here, like, here's my thought on this: if you going to do research by yourself instead of believing somebody else's narrative is offensive to them. They deserve to be offended. Mm -hmm. I understand. I understand because, but it's really when you're under this blanket of propaganda. I do also. I can easily understand this uh, pers people's positions. They they fear for you. Uh, they they <laughs> they tell you watch out. <laughs> you might not come back. <laughs> Things like yeah. This. Well, it's ridiculous. <laughs> okay, it's ridiculous. I got a friend who's a corrections cop. Who was a corrections cop? Mm -hmm. He came here to visit. He came here. I think he spent a month here. He went back to Minneapolis. Um, he realized he really hated the United States after being here, mm -hmm. and so he decided he's moving here. He went back. He came again to get some stuff sorted out. He went back, 
and uh, he's coming back again in uh, at the uh, end of September, mm-hmm. and uh, permanently. Have Have you, uh, in the meanwhile, have you returned to Azovstal since you've done that documentary? Yeah, yeah, I went back uh, just two months ago. Oh, how did you find the industrial complex uh, there? It's still ruined. Yes. Oh, <laughs> <No. laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, no, no problem, no problem. <laughs> um, oh, dude, it's that place is done. That place is absolutely done. Yeah. There's nothing that can be done with that except to bulldoze it and make something else. Make something new. So no, no more steel production over there. That's correct. Okay. Unless they build all new steel production facilities, but I don't think it's going to happen. Mm-hmm. Uh, and one thing I really wanted to ask you is that if you ever met in person, like you have done in the past, Aidan Islin, what would you say to him? Or do, maybe? <laughs> nothing. Nothing. Because you know what? You, you can't... Uh, he's a fool. He's a fool. He has no intelligence. Um... He's not loyal to anything or anyone. You felt the only reason he's you, you touting. Felt, uh, sorry to to jump in, but you felt compassion uh, uh, towards him I at did. some point. I and I still do. Don't get me wrong. I still do. Um, <clears throat> I <clears throat> excuse me. I would love to sit down and have a beer with him. Um, you know, but. He's easily manipulated. Now he's being manipulated by, uh, I don't know, the powers that be to write a book and make money. Um, Because I remember when I was there, he was scared. Mm -hmm. He was scared that he was going to get bombed because the Ukrainians were constantly bombing around his prison. And um, he was scared that he was going to die. I told him, no, you're not going to. Don't worry. I've already spoken to people here, and they're working on a deal for you, which did come to fruition. Um, But, you know, they had to talk tough. They had to talk tough for, to him yeah. and the other ones because they don't want those people coming and blowing up the dumbass. Mm-hmm. So, y- you know, um, I don't know. So Aiden Aslan, I think he's a lost cause, but you know, I I, I wish him the best in his new life. Um, he, I hope he finds peace. But he made a, a recent video. I don't know if you are aware of it. Uh, near Her- Herson region, in the Herson region, near the front, like uh, mocking uh, the other side, saying that uh, "Haha, you thought you'd got me, but I'm here again," and like this this kind of almost childish behavior. Uh, Yeah. You know what? He's very lucky. He's very lucky that he was in the position that he was in. If that would have been the Ukrainian military, they would have killed him. Yeah. 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 We've we've seen some image of the treating POWs. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, if anything, that shows a lot about the grace and compassion and value of life by the Russian people. Mm-hmm. And he can't understand that. Mm-hmm. I saw the video. And that's very sad. Mm-hmm. Sorry, sorry to cut you off. Uh, no, it's, it's... I, I, I saw the video where uh, I even spoke to immediately to friends of mine because I didn't know the context. And I saw that video where you stand next to him and he's singing the Russian anthem. And it was, I, mean, I laughed with that. That was actually uh, funny. But a lot of people took, yeah. that, took that in the wrong way. Like, oh, he's being like tortured and mocked tortured. and humiliated in like this. But uh, it came yeah. across, it came across as funny. Uh, it came across as funny for me, but only recently. Uh, when I was, but, but you saw that he was not forced. No, no. Uh, but at the time, I I only saw that bit. Uh, 
and you were sitting and i i even thought that you were russian because uh, i didn't uh, i was i didn't uh, hear you speaking in that bit that was just uh, showed there well yeah well that's what they reported yeah that a, a early <laughs> russian jailer was uh, forcing him to sing the national anthem with a menacing looking club yeah, on the, the table in front of him the microphone yeah <laughs> It was a microphone. <laughs> Freaking fools. <laughs> True. Uh, only recently I saw the whole video, and uh, uh, and and yeah, of course. Then I've uh, uh, it made sense. It made perfect perfect sense. But yeah. it's still, but it's still a very. I mean, it it represents a lot of the of the information that goes around and how it's treated, and this is yeah the, yeah. And this actual this is the reason why I tried to contact people on the side. Uh, on the other side, being the, the Russia, and sometimes I get the question: well, When are you going to interview people on the side of Ukraine? I said, "There's no need. Just open your mainstream news channels, and you, yeah, <laughs> you have plenty of <laughs> plenty of them there. We we need to true, know more true. about the 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 other side. This is why I, I keep I keep pressing and and trying to speak people that are there and then give can give different uh, views." I know that you have a book as well, The Bad Wolf. Uh, I yeah. don't. I, I haven't. I haven't read it. I must confess. Uh, ah, sorry. It's you probably uh, not missing much. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, was uh, what was that about the 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 book and the just about my fight against the police. Okay. And how I ended up escaping to Russia. Okay. Okay. I know that you have been detained by the Interpol in Russia. Yeah. Yeah, I did. How did, did? I mean, I believe that must have been a scary moment. <laughs> no, no, it wasn't scary because I had political asylum. And uh, I didn't use my political asylum document to check into the hotel. I used my passport, which there's an Interpol notice on. Okay. So when they came arrested me, I said, guys, you know, I have political asylum, right? And they're like, uh, no, we didn't know that. <laughs> And um, I gave my political asylum document, and they were very shocked. And they didn't even put me in the jail. Mm -hmm. I sat in their office for a few hours until they confirmed everything and confirmed that uh, I could not be prosecuted or extradited. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, putting that aside, I wanted to talk to you about another subject, which, which uh, uh, brings questions to me. Uh, did you, when your YouTube channel was deleted, did they give you any reason or they simply deleted it? They just deleted it. Okay. And do you, but can you, do you know if, uh, oh, maybe I said this word and I knew this, this word could not be uh, said and. No, no. Were you aware like, you know of what? something or. Yeah. No, there, um, anything that makes the Ukrainian government look bad they are happy to um, just delete. Mm -hmm. um, I had an interview of some lady saying that how the Ukrainian military were shooting at her and her son when they tried to escape on the humanitarian corridor. And then she said, the Ukrainians are killing our people. Russia has done nothing but help. And, and it was not a long interview. There wasn't much else that she said. Uh, and they deleted that one for misinformation. Okay, okay. They also deleted Mike Jones' channel again. Uh, yeah. And and this and so the question I wanted to reach is that I watch many channels that uh, are critical of the Western uh, stance on, on on all this matter. Yeah. And one of the channels I, I follow is the Duran. I know I'm sure you are familiar with them. And uh, yeah. may, maybe you even met Alex Christopher recently because he was in Moscow. I don't know. Maybe. Uh, and uh, it's it still blows my mind. How can they do their job, which is good, which is great. I think it's it's great work they do, and they don't even get demonetized. And and they and they have, I mean, it's it's quite popular their channel. Uh, your channel and Mike's channel were not, didn't have that much reach and were deleted. And 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 I, and I, I can't understand this criteria that they, they have. 
I so I don't really understand it either. But what I can say is, it seems like whoever goes to the Donbass and they can report from personal experience, they want to get rid of that. Okay. Okay. That's what it seems like to me. It it does make sense if you really, if you have the hard facts on your hands there, that you can present. Yeah. 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 That are irrefutable. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but 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 even so, I I don't know because even Pat Patrick Lancaster is still operating. I don't know how. True. Uh. uh but yeah. But Patrick Lancaster is very neutral in his. Uh, questioning and saying it just leaves it to the it gives you raw footage of the things and uh, and and makes these questions but it it doesn't it doesn't speak much it doesn't at least that's my it's my understanding of it uh, when i watch his yeah. videos uh, uh, who knows okay. who knows yeah true yeah. <laughs> who knows <laughs> who knows about many things uh Okay, uh, John, Mark, Dugan, I don't want to uh, take too much of your time. I just wanted to ask uh, one more thing to you. Yeah, uh, go ahead. I, I would, I would ask many more, but I, like I said, I don't want to take too much of your time. Well, uh, we can, we can do this in parts. So I'm happy to come on again. Uh, thank you, thank you very much. But the question is, your take, and this is really, this is really just asking for your prediction, and it's your opinion. Yeah. I mean. It is what it is. You 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 have more or less uh, sus sustenance to back it up. Uh, I don't uh -huh. know. If, I don't know if my English is correct when I say this kind of thing. No, it's correct. Okay, uh, but what's your take on the recent events on the front line? Is Russia finally pushing for the big arrow to the decisive offensive, or it's it's, it's hard to tell. Um... You know, I think we we saw Russia being stagnant for quite a while, mm -hmm. where they didn't really try to make any ground, make any gains. And everybody's like criticizing, oh, look, Russia's not doing anything. They're not doing anything. But actually, they were doing something. What they were doing is they were buying time. Because during this time that Russia was remaining stagnant, the West was pouring billions and billions of dollars into weaponry, and their economy was getting crushed. Um, all this stuff, China, China was um, going. They were they're dumping treasury bonds. They're hoarding gold. BRICS plus is getting set up, and it is rolling uh, very well. Um, and the economies of the West are being devastated on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. So while I don't see a lot of gain, while I didn't see a lot of gains on the battlefield, I saw a lot of the gains being made behind the scenes, things that people were ignoring, um, things in an economic sense. So Russia has gained tons of support since the start of this military operation. Mm -hmm. Tons of people are sick of the dollar being wielded like a club to bully other nations into doing what they want, mm -hmm. into thinking what they want them to think, uh, and to take their national interest policies, uh, their policies that are in their own national interests, and discarding them for the policies that benefit America. We can see this happening in Africa as we speak now. Uh, the West has pillaged Africa for years, and Russia is going to come in. Russia and China, they are coming in as good faith partners, and they are going to help Africa develop, uh, and they are going to make Africa a lot of money. Okay? So all of these things, I, I think it's just a very, very complicated chess game, and it's going to take a lot longer to uh to come to a checkmate but i think it's going to happen mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i mean the west is screwed right now mm -hmm. uh any 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 take on the 
I know there's been a lot of speculation on this subject of the of, of Wagner uh, group and the whole Prigozhin deal, but uh, people now are starting to think that maybe it was all uh, a theater, a big big play, and uh, that uh, just to move the pieces in the chessboard, for example, the Wagner. I th I thought that from the very very beginning. Okay, okay. Yeah, Mike. And, Mike. Um, Mike also uh, he shared that. Video. Yeah, because yeah, we've had yeah. conversations about that. Look, how do you get Wagner to go to Belarus? Okay. Why would they want to be in Belarus? That's because you got the Chernobyl forest there. You can cut right across, straight down into Kiev, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But how do you get the pieces there without making too many people suspicious? Mm -hmm. Well, you paint, you paint uh, uh, Wagner as a bunch of degenerate outcasts they were kicked out of the country they got no place to go they got no home they they're stuck in belarus um i mean i i think it's a master class in deception mm -hmm. i think so actually one of the moves that happened first uh longer uh, long before this was the transfer of uh, heavy equipment from russia to belarus way before the wagner uh, going there now and uh, it, yeah sure. i mean it's also speculation but it might it might be a piece that fits the puzzle um mr john mark dugan i sincerely thank you for uh being my guest of of this uh humble show uh especially that this i only recently uh, started to uh, make international uh, interviews in english this was mainly a channel dedicated to local issues in in from where i am in portugal in southwest coast of portugal and uh, and so cool. and and it it's it's really great for me good news for me when when you when you don't look at that when you just accept and come and talk and give me your time and i i very much appreciate it no, i appreciate you too Thank so i know i know your channel isn't huge but i hope people will take notice and they will start following you because you're very neutral in your uh, interviewing you know i don't see you pushing one side or the other you're asking good questions and i think it's important that people uh, watch people like you so mm -hmm. and maybe one of these days we can uh, meet up in person who we'll never know come on brother <laughs> you got a you got a bed waiting for you <laughs> and i'll show you all the greatest places in moscow Ah, uh, that seems like Russian propaganda to me. <laughs> nope, not a bit. <laughs> All right, no. thank you very much. I'll um, I'll uh, just ask you uh, one more minute before I put down the live stream. I want to thank everyone that's been watching and people that will watch in the future. This will be shared. Uh, in other uh, media channels like uh, all the podcast platforms, Spotify, you name it, Apple Podcasts, and uh, also on Rumble. All all the videos are backed up on Rumble because one never knows. And uh, please uh, help the channel grow a little bit. I do not have. I, I I put this forward. I do not have any intention. To monetize it i don't also i'm not the good samaritan but it's like i don't want money to drive uh the channel i just want to have the best conversation possible with the people that i that i have thank you very much bye bye oh thanks a lot john